love luxury. Who doesn't love luxury? You know what? I'll tell you what. There are, I will tell you, interesting question you ask. I've got clients all day long that say this to me. I want to work with seniors. I want to work with the average person. I want to work with, um, you know, blue collar, not white collar. I don't want any of those luxury snobs. That's what they interpret. However, I work with luxury, you work with luxury. If you really work with luxury, you know that it's a, a true luxury buyer and seller are at a whole different level. They think differently. They act differently. So where did you get your passion for luxury, first of all? Well, it's kind of a series of unfortunate events. Like Susan, I went down pretty hard with the crash. We actually saw that place um, that she was talking about. Um, I, w I spent about 12 years working in West Seattle, working in the Seattle market, um, mostly working in the $300,000 to $600,000 price points. Um, I ended up in a really rocky divorce, ended up a single mom with a special needs child, and ended up um, needing a new school district. So that's how I ended up in Bellevue. And that kind of just opened my eyes to, oh, look at this, this is, there's some money up here, and I can maybe be able to structure my life so I could raise my children and um, do my work. So I ended up, um, luckily, in a little rental in Medina, and I was like, you know, it is time to up my game. I'm not gonna sit around at three to six hundred thousand dollar price point anymore. I'm around all of these very, very beautiful homes, very intelligent people. Um, I spent a year, it took me a year to tour almost everything that I could see between two and three plus million dollars because I was not gonna put my name on being a luxury realtor until I knew what the difference between a two million dollar house and a three million dollar house. So really how I got into real luxury is more about life sustainability for me and my family and along the way I have just enjoyed every minute of it and seeing fabulous beautiful homes and working with these people who are absolutely not snobs. snobs. Uh, it's been, it's, it's, people are people and actually they're, they're, they're interested in wealth uh, management, they're interested in making sure that these, these are uh, smart investments, but um, yeah, they're right regular people. Well, what's interesting is that the luxury market kind of fell in your lap, so to speak, and you have really embraced it, but what you did, and it's the smartest thing you can do, I always tell, I tell agents all the time, if you want to know a market, you got to get away from your desk and the computer, you got to get in your car and you got to go look at property. The minute you can see property, you're going to know the market. So tell us a little bit about what you've learned about the luxury buyer and seller since you started working in the luxury market. Okay, real quick, I have to correct you. The luxury market did not fall in my lap. I worked really hard at uh, seeing everything I could and networking with the people that I get to work with. So I just needed to. Oh no, I, sure. what, I guess what I'm saying is that really you took something that most people would never, ever just wake up and say, look, I want to get into luxury, but your move over yeah. and being a renter in an area, it's almost like waking up and going, I can do this. I live with the, around these people. I know them. Because a lot of times people are intimidated by the luxury mm -hmm. buyer or seller. And I, I get a lot of those calls where an agent will say, I'm going up against another agent and it's a luxury home. And I just have to remind them it's just a price point, right? It's just a price point. Just yeah. a price point. So what have you noticed though, some common elements or the common denominator with luxury buyers and sellers in today's market? Luxury sellers, actually everybody in the luxury price point here in Seattle, we're not a showy community. Um, everybody, is, it's very much private, um, keeping people's personal information out of, uh, that's, it ends here. Um, so making sure that I operate in the most um, uh, private way with my clients. Um, the other thing is, most of my sellers, they don't have to move. They don't want to move, except for if they get that one special house that they've always had in their mind. So I get clients who are living in a, let's just say their home is worth about 3.5, they can now move up to six, but it's a certain finite criteria set. So these people can be in my database and I, I could be working with them for years before that house would come up. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Um, 
So long-term investment though, with the yes. luxury client, it is, you have to cultivate that relationship sometimes for years. Correct. Yes. It's not, you know, you look at the marketplaces like Medina, Clyde Hill, most of the West Bellevue, the turnover rates are very, very low. Right. So you have to be in it for a long time before you, you might see a sale happen. So tell us a little bit about your luxury book. Oh, yes. Okay, so um, I am writing a book called Moving Millionaires, The Insider's Guide to Buying and Selling Luxury Real Estate. And the reason why I wanted to write this book was, well, being, um, being a broker in a very uh, expensive neighborhood and having a lot of very astute um, competitors out there, I needed to figure out a way to uh, be different be able to get the trust and um, interest of high net worth individuals outside of just putting my picture in the magazine and hoping someone's gonna call me. So um, being able to write a book, and it's still, it's, it's coming out this year, guys, I promise. Susan and I, <laughs> we, we talk about our books. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, for me, the book is about being different and to be innovative and to set myself apart from the other brokers. So where do you get your luxury leads from? I know everybody wants to know. It is really being out in the community. Um, I do a lot of charitable work. I co-chair or chair auctions. Um, my, my son, um, as I mentioned, he uh, is in autism, has autism, is autistic. And um, so, you know, when that happened, when I um, started just pouring myself into uh, the world of autism and, and getting, um, uh, raising awareness of, of autism, um, I really started getting into doing the charity work and that really has changed um, kind of how the community sees me. So I think um, if I was to give any recommendations is to give back into a, a Feel that you are very passionate at. Um, also, being very involved in schools um, gets me around um, high net worth individuals just because of where I live. Um, and yeah, just being, being involved. So, what advice would you give anyone in here that's thinking they want to get into the luxury market? Well, get out and tour. I mean, you really have to know the inventory because um, what, what happens is um, the people. That, are, that you're selling to, they know everything that's happened in their community. They know that house that sold five years ago. They know about that house that's you know about to go up for sale. Um, so if you aren't capable of talking the talk and walking the walk, coming up with like actual facts and figures, um, you're gonna not get the business. So okay, I have yeah, tour, tour, tour. And a final question for each of you, and I'll start with you. Um, what do you do to unwind? you guys are working so much, what do you do to unwind? I don't think you want to know the answer to that. Um, okay, so I have a Peloton at home, and I get on my Peloton bike. Awesome. And I, I have a, my favorite instructor. Does anybody here have a Peloton? Robin. She's so good. <laughs> okay. That's what I do. Awesome. Okay. Susan? Oh, Janet, go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Susan. Uh, I go uh, swimming. Go swimming. Okay, awesome. 